Good morning everyone, Sage here and welcome to the Executive Corner, the expert talks with Calkine TV. And today we're very lucky to have broadcasting live to you Mr. Bob Sharon, the CEO of Blue IoT. So cloud Good. computing has become more popular than ever before with many opportunities developing for investment into digitization in Australia and across the APAC region. And in today's show, we're going to explore more on this space. As you know, we bring you the industry leaders, successful business owners, all under the one roof to help you discover the insights of the stock markets. So we're very lucky today to share some space with Mr. Bob Sharon, the CEO of Blue IoT. Welcome, Bob. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Sage, and a good morning to you and uh, to your audience. Excellent. Well, to give the viewers some background, Bob is a passionate and tenacious disruptor and innovator, an ardent believer in the aptitude of IoT, cloud-controlled smart systems and sensors, as well as noble cybersecurity in delivering positive outcomes. Now, that makes me want to hear more for sure, so let's get started. Blue IoT is a global leader for the collaboration, integration and delivery of smart buildings and cities that are sustainable and greener. Bob, we'd love to hear more about this emerging business at a time when green energy agendas are taking the centre stage across the world. Well, thank you for that, Sage. Um, I'm very honoured to uh, be part of this organisation. Um, uh, the Blue, by the way, in Blue IoT is the Blue Economy. And the blue economy is what does it take to build a building, a city, a place? What does it take to maintain it? And what effect does it have on the people, the community and the planet as a whole? So it's a 360 degree approach uh, to what, what we do. And we leverage the Internet of Things as an enabler. Uh, a lot of organisations are selling technology and selling IoT. But if it doesn't deliver an outcome, uh, uh, what is the point? So what we're about is delivering real outcomes, not some, you know, academic talk fest about, you know, how many million ways we can do this or that or, or how, how we can get a fast train in Australia, which is just, you know, taking forever when we should, should be having fast trains around the country doing 600 kilometres an hour. Um, but what we're about is delivering smart buildings and smart cities in a way that has never been done before. Um, and that is by leveraging our Encompass Blue platform, which is really an end-to-end -end, uh, smart cities platform suite, whether it's building automation, energy management, smart grid management, renewables management, uh, even COVID-19 risk mitigation management. Um, what's important is that we're improving health and wellness of, of our people all over the world, wherever we come from. Um, and also that we reduce energy in our carbon footprint. And many organisations now have this, this vision to get to carbon neutrality. And what we're delivering today, not tomorrow, today, are carbon reductions of anywhere from 25 to 50% within existing buildings without replacing all the infrastructure, without spending millions of dollars to, to get new equipment which, by the way, might get you a 20% saving, but we're going up to 50% savings in carbon footprint and asset life extension and improving health and wellness of people. So um, I'm not passionate, yeah, slightly, because it's about delivering real outcomes, not, not having lots of talk fests and organisations out there professing they're sustainable and putting out green loans when they themselves you know, uh, uh, don't, you know, there's one uh, large organisation, um, a, a bank, I won't mention which, um, who profess to be very sustainable, but when it goes to their buildings, oh, it's not a priority. Um, the, uh, the facilities managers uh, have got other priorities and, uh, you know, uh, they've got better things to do. Well, I don't know what better things there are to do than get on with you know, delivering carbon footprint reduction and making places more productive. So there's a lot of greenwash out there, even today, by large organisations and banks that pretend to be sustainable. Exactly. A very interesting space to watch, especially as Sydney moves towards hopefully becoming a 24-hour city. Um, and I can see how businesses might need a little bit of help with managing the risks involved with this type of investment as the tax office has come under some scrutiny when they've purchased 
large amounts of plants for a plant wall that's meant to be more energy efficient but it'd be interested to hear your insights on these types of projects as we continue the discussion. We've learned that Blue IoT ensures results that will drive down costs, improve health and safety while reducing carbon emissions and pollution. Could you please elaborate on the key offerings via the Encompass Blue platform? Smart City Integration and Innovation, please. Yes, yeah, so really we have a, 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 a few, we have about 15 components. So I won't go into all of them here, yeah, that will take too long. But the mainstay of these cover um, building automation, that's uh, building management systems and energy management systems, where we take full control of the building from the cloud. And so uh, we don't have a, a, a PC on site that manage it, which is quite traditional, but rather we manage it all from the cloud because we get to understand the whole site from end to end and we can better manage it with our uh, machine learning and, and other intelligence uh, pick up all the data, find the anomalies, get rid of energy waste, alert our clients when we find problems to have them checked um, and, and better manage the whole site as a whole rather than a bunch of disparate systems. We're measuring every electrical circuit in our purview so again we understand what is happening. A wise person once said you can't manage what you don't know. So we need to understand what's happening on site everywhere and uh, we need to understand the point of what's happening uh, with that and respond in real time and deliver continuous commissioning that is not just sell a, a product leave it which is normal and then it's up to the client to fend for themselves they don't have the wherewithal in general to interpret the data and understand what's going on we do this continuously with our in-house team and drive uh, returns to the triple bottom line and then this inc includes an area called health and wellness so indoor air quality so we're doing work uh, at a major private school uh, and we're finding all sorts of issues around indoor air quality and remedying the, the problem not just finding problems but fixing the problems and a lot of office buildings and places have similar problems then we get into predictive maintenance and then understand what's happening with um, a device so we can prevent something from having an outage. That is, for example, putting a vibration sensor on a, on a motor, a pump, um, measuring how the power is behaving on a device so we can better understand what's happening and we will know before it fails and can alert people and have it checked before it fails. And therefore, again, save on outages, save on maintenance and a whole lot of other things. So basically, we cover health and wellness, predictive maintenance, that is to forecast maintenance and turn unplanned maintenance into planned maintenance and reduce the cost of that, extend the asset life, and then dramatically reduce energy consumption and carbon footprint. Um, even by extending the asset life of equipment by another five years, maybe 10, we're also helping to reduce carbon footprint because we don't have to manufacture new equipment to replace it as early as we normally would have. So it, 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 is, it is pretty amazing. The other thing we do is a defects liability period as a service, which in a new site, it's like a guarantee, you know, that equipment has to work. If it breaks, they have to fix it. If something's wrong with it, you know, just like your TV, if it breaks, you know, you get it fixed or replaced under warranty. So uh, what we do is measure the energy of all these new devices to make sure it's within the specification. If it's not, we alert the client to say they're more than 10% over. They can go to the vendor, the manufacturer to say, hey, in your specification, you said this will only use 100 kilowatts of energy per hour, but you're using 150. Fix it under defects liability or under your warranty. And that's the other service that we also provide amongst many others. Fantastic. Sounds like a really hands-on holistic approach to maintaining a building. And moving on, it is interesting to note that Blue IoT has developed and leveraged a range of leading edge technologies, platforms, sensors of all descriptions, combined with data analytics and interpretation, machine learning and AI, which you just touched on then. Can you shed a little bit more light or would you like to elaborate on any particular data science and technological advances from Blue IoT? Yes, definitely. Um, and this is emerging. There are a lot of organisations that talk about we use AI, artificial intelligence, 
um, for whatever we do. But in the built environment, that is within buildings, office buildings, hotel shopping centres, uh, all sorts of uh, indoor environments, um, artificial intelligence is it, it's early days for AI because we haven't collected a lot of data of what's happening within these buildings and it's starting to build now. So what I'm saying is right now we need a lot of human interpretation by domain expert engineers. That is people who are electrical, mechanical engineers and controls engineers, uh, HVAC engineers, um, to interpret the data. So we find all this, this data and there's a lot of it. Uh, and a lot of organizations are bombarded with data, but they don't know what to do with it. So what we're able to do is, yeah, we, we have the analytics platform that determines the anomalies and picks up the anomalies. And then our engineers look at these anomalies and say, okay, what could be the problem? Oh, well, it could be, it could be one of two things, one of three things, and we need a contractor to go on site and have a look at uh, this device, this chiller or this pump or whatever it may be. And so then we find what it is, we get rid of energy waste or we prevent it from failing. But there's no 100% automatic AI that will find what's going on in the built environment. In some cases, yes. But I believe over the next five years, we'll get much better at this. And uh, we and, and other organisations will be building their AI uh, to much better determine. And instead of having input at, at 70 or 80 percent of human engineers, uh, that will go down to probably 10 percent uh, in five years time. As we improve our AIs, we build our library of knowledge of what happens uh, and, and do that. But just to, to give you an example, some of the benefits that we derive from these things even today is we're able to learn about the habits of a building, like how it's heating up or cooling, cooling depending on if you're in winter or summer, and how we can better manage uh, the heating and the cooling uh, in terms of when we may start, when we stop, um, and do that dynamically based on the behavior of the individual building. There's no cookie cutter approach because every building is different. The sun, the temperature that faces the side of the building, where it's positioned, they're all different. And so we need to learn the behavior of the buildings. And so we're able to do this already today. And we're able to slowly optimize based on those learnings. And we're doing this now, but there's a lot more to go, a long way to go and so many wonderful things that we, we, we will be doing and, and other organizations also in our, in our business of property technology. And so it's very exciting. Uh, the path is just amazing. And uh, a lot of exciting things to be seen uh, here, including things like perpetual sensors, um, that is batteryless sensors uh, that will keep lasting. And so uh, we're, we're working on development with our partners in Europe uh, on a new generation of sensors, again, to reduce carbon footprint. It's all about the carbon footprint and eventually not having to use batteries even. Many, many benefits mentioned there, and especially in today's uh, atmosphere of increasing sophistication of cyber attacks as well. I can see how an expert monitoring the anomalies in the data being provided or captured could be of a major advantage to businesses. So Blue IoT is the first company in Australia to offer DLP AAS, Defects Liability Period, as a service, keeping the vendors honest as Blue IoT looks at actual performance levels rather than just a break fixed service. Is it true that Blue IoT also offers a wide range of COVID-19 risk mitigation services? Uh, look, indeed, indeed it is, Sage. Um, uh, basically, what that means is we, we better manage airflow management. Uh, there, there are certain re you know, regulations around how many air changes per hour, for example. Um, there are other things like um, uh, proximity of people in buildings or how many people in a building if you've got a density requirement. And we can count people coming in and going out of buildings without recognising faces, so we maintain privacy. Uh, the other one uh, that we can do are looking at antimicrobial sprays that are TGA approved 
and uh, they could go on filters and cooling coils, and they're good for up to 12 months, which again uh, further uh, mitigates the risk uh, of, uh, of uh, the spread uh, through the airways. Uh, I have found that uh, there are uh, even some hospitals that um, could do with something like this uh, to better manage the air quality uh, and again, reduce the risk uh, of the spread of COVID. So managing the airflows within a building is, is fundamental to diminishing the risk. Um, and uh, so there's a whole range of services around, around this that we do offer. And again, it's like an a la carte menu where clients can select um, any component they wish to further reduce the risk of such uh, uh, spread. Again, we don't have all the answers um, to uh, diminish the risk, but we have a number of areas that we can certainly make inroads and be a, a contributor to reducing the risks of the spread of COVID. What an amazing project where you can actually help businesses who have the right idea in mind that they want to be more energy efficient, reduce their carbon footprint, and look at all the peripherals that they may not have thought of as well. And lastly, if you could touch upon the vision and mission of the business established with the broader, greener goal, and do you have any upcoming developments, offerings of the business that people need to keep an eye on? Yeah, look, for our mission, it's about um, making sure that everyone wins. Um, and in that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, uh, probably put up a curly one here, and that is we have a highly discriminatory employment policy. And that is that uh, if you haven't got a sense of humour, you can't work for us. So we believe in um, good fun. Uh, we believe in everyone winning. So when we run projects, when we deliver, uh, our focus is very much on outcomes for our clients and service. Uh, we, we don't always get it right, but we, we will fix any problem that does come up and it's about the attitude no company can get everything perfectly right and we're in that way the same but it's the attitude that you put out when something goes wrong you, you're there and you deal with it and you look after your clients but you look after your staff you look after your suppliers and everyone in the supply chain wins and so we believe that we're we should all be winners and we all come up together and uh, we even run an amazing internship program. Uh, we're trying to find the best students um, to join us. And we have a number of interns that, uh, that have you know, gone full time uh, with us, uh, permanent positions. Uh, and uh, we're, we're even hiring as we speak now. We're opening up um, Sydney um, office where Melbourne headquartered. And then we'll be opening up Brisbane. We're waiting to open up offshore in other countries, in Asia, America, the Middle East, in Europe. Uh, we're looking for all kinds of channel partners. And so basically our vision is to be across the globe within uh, two years. Um, I won't say in every country, but certainly covering um, uh, the world geography uh, from various places. So we have big plans. Uh, we're on a major capital raise at the moment, though we don't have to have it because we're looking for the right partners um, and we're looking to grow very much with the right like-minded people who care. Uh, and that is who care about outcomes for everyone, for all of us uh, in doing things the right way. Um, so yeah, very exciting. We've got many new developments, uh, even with our controllers. Uh, we've got a new generation of controllers coming out uh, in the next few weeks. Um, and what we also do around cybersecurity is that we take, we run non IP networks within buildings, which again, was very much a first in controlling, uh, buildings and places using non IP radio networks. Uh, again, we're leading the world in this, in this way, in the way we deliver this service. Uh, the big multinationals won't like us. Um, but then again, we're here to serve uh, rather than take advantage of, of uh, the situation. And so we want to help our customers, uh, whether they be hotel operators, facilities management companies, building owners, uh, and so many people to save. In fact, we're delivering returns of under three years, including capital and operating uh, costs on our subscriptions. Uh, so our balance sheets, our 
CFOs are going to love us, sustainability office, officers are going to love us. Um, and that's what I'm saying is that everyone wins, whether you're a bean counter or whether you're looking after sustainability. So we're all winners. And that's our vision, to make sure that everyone wins and we have fun along the way. Because if you can't have fun, what's the point? I mean, really. Exactly. I'm with you on that one, Bob. Keep that good energy flowing. And thank you so much for joining us on our show today. I'm sure your valuable insights have been enjoyed by our viewers. And if you're just joining us, viewers, we just had a very interesting discussion with Mr. Bob Sharon, the CEO of Blue IoT. Thanks again, Bob. I uh, hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. The full recorded interview will be available from the YouTube channel, Calkine Media, in the next couple of days. Thanks for your time, viewers, and stay tuned for more live updates. And as we say, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine.